Five and Dime stores sell a variety of inexpensive household items at discounted prices. The concept was popular in the late 19th century with the F.W. Woolworth stores beginning the concept. Most five and dime stores were in downtown shopping districts composing of square footage just under 10K. With the shopping mall boom of the 60s and 70s, consumers started to shop at malls rather than in downtown districts. The format slowly faded away by the early 2000s in favor of larger discount stores. In today's video, we will be going over the five and dime chain known as TG&Y, which has been requested by many of you in my past top 10 forgotten videos. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. TG&Y got its name from the last initials of its three founders, Rodden Tomlinson, Enoch Gosselin, and Raymond Young. The three men had each owned separate variety stores in Oklahoma when they met at a trade show in 1932. In 1935, the three pooled their financial resources to form the Central Merchandise Corporation and built a warehouse in Oklahoma City. This allowed their stores to buy merchandise in bulk directly from manufacturers, instead of through wholesalers. The founders articulated their business philosophy as, have what people want at a price they can afford to pay. They opened their first jointly owned store in 1936 on the northwest corner of Main Street and Crawford Avenue. The chain used the advertising slogan, your best buy is at TG&Y. Many of you may not know that the owner's initials TG&Y were arranged according to the ages of the three, with Tomlinson being the oldest. In 1957, TG&Y was acquired by Butler Brothers of Chicago, with the stipulation that Young's leadership remain unchanged as the other two owners retired. After Young's retirement in 1970, leadership changed frequently. The chain would operate approximately 760 retail stores in the 1960s, and it became a wholly owned subsidiary of City Products, a Chicago-based company that already operated other variety stores. Household Finance Corporation, HFC, would later acquire City Products in 1966. In 1970, a man by the name of David Green, who was a manager at TG&Y for over 10 years, took a $600 loan and started a home business in his garage assembling and selling miniature picture frames with a partner, Larry Pico. The focus would later change to arts and crafts, which would become Hobby Lobby. In 1975, after David Green left his career with TG&Y after 13 years. After its heyday in the 1960s, unsuccessful attempts were made to expand and rebrand TG&Y under the trade names TG&Y Dollar, Aim for the Best, and Dollar T. TG&Y also opened and operated an estimated total of 120 TG&Y family centers, which were larger stores averaging between 40,000 to 60,000 square feet. These stores were larger than the typical 10,000 square foot TG&Y stores. This was also an attempt to become comparable to department stores that were popping up in urban areas and suburbs where malls were being developed. In 1986, with 920 stores, TG&Y was acquired by McCrory Stores, which was a division of Rapid American Corporation, a holding company that owned several retail chains, in which many were other notable five-and-dime stores. McCrory's purchased a total of 718 stores from HFC and closed 200 stores shortly thereafter, with reasons ranging from demographics, competition, leasing terms, and profits. Rose's Discount Stores, who at the time operated 209 stores in six southeastern states, acquired some of the TG&Y locations along with Zaire. An attempt to sell some of the TG&Y family stores to Target would fail, due to the 60,000 square foot building space being too small. Its Oklahoma headquarters were merged with those of McCrory, eliminating 180 jobs, as it kept a regional office open in the area. The remaining TG&Y stores retained the nameplate, but the merchandise and layout were changed to fit the McCrory image. McCrory would later attempt to convert a lot of the TG&Y stores to its name, but later opted to not change it. McCrory would later see that the purchase of the chain proved to be a difficult transition, as many of the stores, 
most notably the TGNY Family Centers, were beyond the typical 10,000 to 15,000 square foot footprint that the company operated in, and the merchandise mix was very different. In 2001, TGNY's owner McCrory Stores filed bankruptcy, and all stores were eventually closed. Raymond Young, the youngest and last survivor of the three founders, died in the same year. Ultimately, over 36,000 TGNY employees were displaced. Many went to work for Walmart, helping fuel their remarkable growth resulting from TGNY vacating thriving markets. Some former employees would also go work for Hobby Lobby, the chain that was started by former TGNY manager David Green. TGNY and Walmart historically avoided locating in the same market, and with TGNY stores out of the picture, there was no such restraint. It was also rumored that Kmart avoided the Oklahoma City area as well. The legacy of TGNY still lives today as a special exhibit, entitled TGNY is Still Alive, the 80th Anniversary Exhibit, which was opened to celebrate the 80th anniversary of its first store. This exhibit is located at the Kingfisher Chisholm Trail Museum, but unsure if it is currently open to the public. This brings us to the end with the history and legacy of TG&Y. Let me know in the comments below if you ever shopped or worked at TG&Y, and if you can guess how many times we said the name TG&Y in the video. See you next time.